by the grace of Christ. <coughs> Let's go. Let's go to Second Kings chapter 5 and verse 14. By the, by the grace of Christ, uh, chapter 5 of Second Kings and verse 14. So he went down and dipped seven times the Jordan according to the saying of the man of God. And his flesh were restored like a flesh of a little child. And he was clean. And he returned to the man of God, he and all his aides, and came and stood before him. And he said, Indeed, now I know that there is no God in all the earth except in Israel. Now therefore, please take a gift from your servant. But he said, As the Lord lives before whom I stand, I will receive nothing. And he urged him to take it, but he refused. So Naaman said, Then if not, please let your servant be given two new loads of earth. The servant will no longer offer either burnt offering or sacrifice to other gods unto the Lord. And this thing may the Lord pardon your servant. My servant goes to the temple of Remen to worship there, and he leans on my hand and bow down there in the temple of Remen. When I bow down the temple of Remen, may the Lord please pardon your servant in this thing. Then he said to him, Go in peace. He departed from him in short distance. But Gehazi, servant of Elijah, the man of God, look, my master has spared Naaman the Syrian while not receiving from his hands what he brought. But as the Lord lives, I will run after him and take something from him. So Gehazi pursued Naaman. When Naaman saw him running after him, he got down in the chariot to meet him and said, Is all well? He said, All is well. My master has sent me, saying, Indeed, just now two young men of the sons of the prophets have come to me in the mountains of Ephraim. Please give them a talent of silver and two chains of a garment. So Naaman said, Please take two talents. And he urged them to bound two talents of silver and two bags with two chains of garments, and he handed them to two of his servants, and they carried them on ahead of him. When he came to the citadel, he took them from the hand and stored them away in the house. Then he, then he let the men go, and they departed. Now he went in and stood before his master Elisha, said to him, Where did you go, Ahazen? And he said, Your servant did not go anywhere. Then he said to him, Did not my heart go with you when the men turned back to meet you? Is it time to receive money and to receive clothing, olive groves and vineyards, sheep and, and oxen, male and female servants? Therefore, lepers of Naaman shall cling to you and your descendants forever. And he went out from his presence, lepers as white as snow. Naaman, a general of the army of Syria, a great man before his lord, he was honored before Syria. Because the Lord gave him salvation through him. But he was a he was a leprous man though. God though had foreknown Naaman and assigned leprosy to him, a man whose God discerned in his heart. If he hears the word of God, he's going to hope only if he's a leper. Whatever he hears from the word of God, 
He's never gonna he's not gonna hear, he's not gonna home. The only hope for him to believe in God is for Naaman to find himself in this very condition, which is a, a terrible affliction. So God sent a maidservant He sent her to the house of Naaman. She had a heart that was filled with faith. Uh, she dared to say that no one else dared to say, I hope that my Lord, who is so. will go to the prophet of God and she will, will be healed and now the uh, wife and spouse of Naaman and because they knew of his condition they are hoping God and he considered and decided and he performed and he made all the way to Elisha the servant of God And he was imagining that Elisha, that Elisha would come out, he would wave his uh, signal with his arms. But instead of Elisha, <coughs> son of Elisha, um, <laughs> instead he saw a servant of uh, Elisha. We asked them, go and wash the Jordan seven times. Your flesh shall be restored to you and shall be clean. Now, but now he's tried or he's tested in his obedience. How beautiful the lessons of the word of God is giving us. Is he going to obey? No, he's not going to obey. But God loves him. And the servants came near to Naaman and spoke to him and strengthened him and exhorted him to do exactly what the prophet said to do in the Jordan River. And indeed, he went down and dipped seven times the Jordan River according to the saying of the man of God. And he returned. He returned. He returned. And of course, the man of God, he never receives money. Um, as Naaman had a lot of uh, rewards to give him material, Elisha didn't receive. Naaman insisted. And today, the issue is not Naaman, no Elisha. It's Gehazi, whom God chose, whom Elisha chose to be his servant. As Elisha was a servant to Elijah, now a servant of Elisha is Gehazi. Elisha was faithful till the end and Gehazi was faithful to Elisha till the end but let us go to let us go to Proverbs let's go to let's go to there's a prayer in Prover Proverbs there's a unique prayer, which is the book of Solomon. In order to know the wisdom, discipline, understanding, to receive doctrine, understanding, judgment, knowing, learning, discerning. So the wiser, him with the word of God to become wiser. 
and the one who hears, who pays at the word of God. So they will receive wisdom and understanding. No. Not the Lord gave wisdom. In all the books of Proverbs, there's no other prayer. It says in chapter 30. No, he says, he asks from God, he only asks two things from the Lord. Only two things. He only prays once. Two things are requests, he says, of you. He says to the Lord in verse 7. In chapter 30 of Proverbs. <coughs> Remove false who lies from me. Vain ambitions. Put away from me and every false word, but especially give me neither poverty nor riches, feed me with the food allotted to me. Oh, lest I be poor and still I profane the name of my God. This is a special prayer. And the first part of this prayer is spiritual, and then the second is material. Or oh, human prayer. The spiritual prayer is where it says, Lord, don't allow me or I request remove falsehood that lies far from me and as for my life please feed me with the food allotted to me lest I be poor and still so my life will be safe in your presence now we come back to Gehazi Then when he saw that Elisha did, did not receive, and Gehazi uh, despised Elisha in his heart, and when he denied the gifts of Naaman as a reward, because the word of God reveals to us the problem of Gehazi was in verse 26 the latter eh, half is it time to receive mon money this is what Elisha discerns the heart of Gehazi with the revelation of God is it time to receive money and to receive clothing Olive groves and vineyards, sheep and oxen, male and female servants. What is it that dwells in your heart? What desires are those of you? You have the best spiritual position to be at the presence of God, to be a servant of the Lord. And what you desire is vanity. Silver, garments, vineyards, servants and maid servants. And today the word of God says to us, and it's a tremendous truth. A man of God is not tempted by God because God has no relation with evil. 
but now God or oh, the Word of God enters in our hearts and then to realize what will come in our lives. Here I want to open up, make a uh, open parenthesis. The sin Gehazi committed uh, that God never granted him time to repent. Gehazi instantly became leprous. What the Word of God says, what the Word of God says that the, the issues of life jump out of our heart of the sum. There are some things that if we desire them, we don't have time to repent. Even though the blood of Christ cleanses from all our sin, Thus, it's very important when we receive communion every Sunday and to check our hearts, to check with our spirit what is it that we desire? And what is it that your spirit is trying to discern? Does the word of God say? Everyone is tempted by their own sins. And, and there is hope. And when sinfulness is executed, it bears death. It made an impression to me when I paid attention we see this in the New Testament, the same thing again. And the Lord does not give a chance, some issue, to go and repent. When, when we express a lie and desire and express lies and we reinforce a line or desire to the line then there's fatal uh, uh, retribution from god whoever desires to get rich the, um as it says in timothy is vain desires sink people to perdition and the reason is the root of all evil is the love of money, covetousness, with that in the uh, epistle of Colossians, the covetousness, God is very strict. That's the only prayer that he brought to God. The man... Uh, Thus, in Proverbs, it says, Remove from me any vanity that I reinforce and strengthen with the lies. Thus, grant me, thus grant me a safe life, so I do not desire riches nor poverty. So I make it to the point where I, I become poor. Yeah, has it did not agree? With the reasoning of Elisha, with reason, without saying anything, he says, I'm going to go and receive. He made a decision. But in his, his mind, he had riches. He wasn't, he wasn't happy with what he had. He said, I'm going to receive money, clothing, olive groves, vineyard, sheep, oxen, male female servants. He didn't care to have reverence in sufficiency, in contentment. This is called desire of the eyes or desire of other things. That when it leads a person to covetousness, he loses a chance of repentance, which scared me. 
when she returns. That the blood of Christ cleanses from all sinfulness means that I always have time to repent. But Gehazi, he went, he lied to Naaman, he asked him, and tell of silver, and two And Naaman, who was grateful to God, gave him two talents, and even more than what he asked to Gehazi. And he brought them all the way to his house, and Gehazi hid them as if nothing's happening, and then he went to Elisha. He, he performed and executed his this sinful desire, his covetousness and greed, brethren. It's not our days, dear brethren, that we are going through evil times. We are experiencing pandemic. The Lord showed me two, two tsunami. The first came, and we ran and went up to a mountain. The second tsunami was much greater. It came. very few people managed to escape I couldn't understand I was I was thought it was an earthquake but it was the pandemic and the poverty that's coming the financial crisis we went through is a toy now the stores are closing down there is no customers There's no m money movement. And now, the danger increases of covetousness, of lying. But now, the chance to pray, to grant us sufficiency to be content as the word of God says uh, to be content with our food and coverings and when we see people to to advance with lying Let us we see that when there's no result the word of Gaza. Let us distance distance ourselves from us. Because they may influence us. It is horrible. Greed is like idolatry is a great defiling and because the the heart of a person is corrupt perverted and exceedingly corrupting we need to discern our heart first and foremost and then we discern within the members of a family, our wife, just in case our wife, to consider with covetousness. I want this, I want that, and this, and that. And let me find a way to find, or maybe the spouse, the husband is considering. What do I want? And all of us together to go to the Lord, the Word of God, and to say, we thank you, Lord, because you are taking care of us. How serious this is to praise God with the sinner that God care.
takes care of us. There are two ways. One way uh, to take care of my family uh, with vain desires is going to lead you're going to lead me to sinfulness without repentance <coughs> and to go to the Lord the other way asking first the righteousness of God and His justice with the certainty that He cares for me not that we're not going to work what matters is what do we want what do you want you want what you want what you see or you don't see do you want the things you can see or the things you design of the eyes is what you desire or the kingdom of heaven very easily I may discern today in every moment my future seen my heart to say my heart what do you want my heart and if I discern let me re uh, me repent quickly let me glorify God so dear brethren this latter day the pain of the laboring woman is inner to see one way one We want to see how we're going to get rich. How we're going to get rich and, and have a good time. How would I discern? It's easy to see whether desire of the things that are visible and the things that are non visible. You really want the kingdom of heaven. Do you really desire the rapture of the church then? Then live for that. What do I have now in my mind? You know, to for my children to uh, progress in this life. In this life or in heaven? That's good, but it's very easy to discern to discern what my future is from from what I see in my heart from what I want and I'm repeating is it from what we are seeing desire of the eyes desire of other things or is it out of the things that we don't see? Desire the kingdom of heaven. What do you want? What do you contend for? What do you want? The Lord is coming. May God preserve us. Horrible sinfulness uh, comes out of greed and covetousness. There's no worse sinful. But covetousness and deserve and ambition. The end of uh, Gehazi is horrible. Because desire of these things <coughs> from the wealth that you received, the name I gave you with joy. 
Now they leprosy of lameness and cling to you and your descendants forever. It's not just that the leprosy is going to come to me, but all my house without anyone having any time to repent, dear brethren. Let us be very careful what the Lord is saying. Watch out. And watch out, be alert and pray. So you won't come in temptation. Everything, all sins, after all sinning, um, there's time to repent. If you're uh, committing adultery or fornication or any defilement or idolatry, uh, you may repent for all this. Malice, um, divisions, merrymaking, all these things you may. Well, it doesn't talk about greed and covetousness. Something else. If you are led astray, and you perform with with the line, because it has a lie both to Naaman and to Elisha. Where'd you go? I went nowhere, but I saw you that you went to Naaman. I saw your heart where you had, and that moment. Leprosy came upon Gehazi. I don't see any other sin to say that's root of all evil. Yes, Kavajan. The psalm or led astray and pierce themselves with many pains. May the Lord preserve us. The, the moment is close on. How are you going to react to these evil times? How are you going to react? And this financial crisis, how are you going to react, respond? There is a way. I'll make it. Lord, please help me. I'll be you help me. I'm never going to be able to make it. Amen. <laughs>